Hello, welcome to lesson 22 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be talking about combinations. Okay, so in previous lessons we talked about ordering objects, taking a, taking a group of objects and, and putting them in, in a specific order. Okay, we talked about permutations, the number of different ways in which I can order some objects like books on a shelf. So where the order in which those objects appear on that shelf matter. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at combinations, which are the ways in which we can select a number of objects, but where the order in which I select them does not matter. OK, so, for example, choosing a team of five people from a squad of eight where I'm not going to assign different roles to the team. I'm not going to assign uh, positions to the players. I'm just going to choose a team of five. To get on the bus to go to a to, to go to a match, okay. So the choice of that five is a combination because the order in which I choose them doesn't matter. It's just which five people get on the bus, okay. Um, another example would be I in the permutations lesson I talked about um, giving prizes to my top three Harry Potter books, okay. So a prize for first place, a prize for second place, a prize for third place. In combinations, I could just choose my favorite three Harry Potter books. Okay, where the order in which they were chosen doesn't matter, but just which are my top, which are, which are in my top three, not which are first, second, and third, but which are the three favorite ones I have. Okay, so this brings in use of a specific button on your calculator, the NCR button. Okay, so I just want to talk briefly about the NCR button. Okay, how to how to use it and what it means. Okay. For example, let's say I wanted to choose a team of two people from this list of five people. So Anne, Ben, Chris, Dunk and Ellie. OK, I want to choose a team of two. OK, maybe a doubles pair OK, in tennis. And I could I could list all the different ways I could choose that team. OK, so I could choose Anne with Ben. Anne with Chris and with Dunk and with Ellie. Or I could then choose Ben with Chris, Ben with Dunk, Ben with Ellie. Or I could choose Chris with Dunk, Chris with Ellie. Or I could choose Dunk with Ellie. OK, so there are 10 possibilities there. So there are 10 possible choices or combinations of two from a possible total of five that I'm choosing from. OK. The other way of calculating this is using the NCR button. OK, so or I could say that I am choosing two from five, which my calculator will do from me. If I do from five people choose two and press equals, it'll give me 10. The choose button on your calculator is the button that on most calculators, it's shift divide. OK, so it looks like NCR. So it looks like the formula here, NCR. And what you do is press five first, then shift divide, then two, then press equals, and it will give you 10. And that tells you the number of ways in which I could choose a pair of things from a total of five possible options. OK, and notice that if I was doing permutations, that this would be more different permutations of two things from five because Anne Ben would be different to Ben Anne. Okay, it's like here I've chosen Anne first and Ben second. If it was permutations, then choosing Ben first, then Anne second would be different. However, in this question, Anne Ben and Ben Anne is the same team. Okay, so that's no different. So in combinations, that is the total possible options. Okay, the formula for those of you who are interested, okay, which you will go into at A level more, the formula for this, for NCR, is as follows. It's N factorial divided by R factorial times by N minus R factorial. And it comes from the formula for NPR, which we discussed in a previous lesson. The formula for NPR was N factorial over N minus R factorial. OK, and the reason why we're also dividing by R factorial, I'll get into in a second. 
So if we wanted to do five choose two, using the formula, we would do five factorial divided by two factorial times by five minus two, which is three factorial. Okay, the two numbers here and here will add up to make n because n minus r plus r make n. Okay, so that is five factorial divided by three factorial would just leave you five times four. So if it was five p2, it would be five factorial just over three factorial, which is five times four times three times two times one divided by three times two times one, which would just leave you five times four. And as I just said to you earlier, that gives you 20 different options where the order matters. So each of these 10 options here has another opposite option. So Anne Ben has also Ben Ann. Anne Chris has also Chris Ann, okay, for permutations. But for combinations, we don't have that because that's still the same team. It doesn't, because for combinations, the order doesn't matter. That's why we have to divide by two factorial as well, because that will get rid of all of the duplicates that permutations needs that combinations doesn't need, okay? But that's going into more detail than you need. For the moment, just make sure you are able to calculate using your calculator, not even really needing this formula, just be able to make sure you can type that into your calculator. Five, choose two. Okay, let's go on to a question, an example, where we're using combinations and where we're using our calculator to find this. So there are 13 applicants, eight women, five men, for a five person local council committee on housing. How many different committees could be chosen? Okay, so, the committee itself doesn't have an order in which it's 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 um it's chosen. It, do, it doesn't matter who was chosen first, second, third, fourth, or fifth for that committee. It's just a committee that talks together and comes up with ideas and solutions and deals with issues. Okay. So this is not a permutation problem, this is a combination problem. So I want to know how many different teams of five people I can choose from 13. Okay, so if we're not, if I don't care about how many women, how many men are chosen for the committee, if it's just from the 13, I want to choose five, all I need to do is simply choose five from 13. So that's 13 choose five. And that's 1,287 possible different committees that could be chosen. Okay. You could list them, but you'd be there for quite a while. Okay, let's let's step up the difficulty slightly. If I choose the committee, the five-person committee, randomly, what's the probability that there are at least four women chosen in the committee? Okay. So probability, I probably I I, I need to think how many different ways there are of getting what I want, and then how many different possible options there are. Well, I know how many different possible options there are. There are 1,287 different possible committees. So my probability is going to be out of 1,287. And what I need to do is I need to find out how many of those 1,287 give me at least four women. At least four women means either four women and one man, or five women. So look at those two specific options and work out the number of ways of getting a committee with that many women and that many men. So firstly, let's look at a committee with five women. Okay, so in this case, if it's five women, well, there are eight women to choose from. So it's like I'm ignoring completely the five men. I am choosing five women from a total possible of eight women who have applied. And there are eight choose five, from eight choose five women. 
So that's 56 different possible five women committees. Then four women and one man. For this one, okay, you need to find the number of ways in which you can choose four women and you need to find the number of ways you can choose one man and then you combine them together, okay? That plus symbol in between isn't very helpful. I should have put an and symbol or something because it's not adding the two probabilities, okay? So if I want to choose four women, that's from eight. So that's eight, choose four. If I want to choose one man, I'm choosing from five men. There are five men to choose from. So five, choose one. That's the number of ways of choosing five men. That, by the way, is just five because there are five men to choose from. So I could choose one of the five men. So there are five different ways in which that can happen. Okay. So for each of these eight choose four ways, there are five choose one different possible options for the man. So we multiply them together to find the combination of different four women and one man committees. And that is 350. So therefore, there are 406 different committees with at least at least four women. So the probability, if I choose a, a committee at random from the 13, the probability that I get at least four women is going to be 406 out of 1,287. So the probability at least four women is equal to 406 out of 1,287. And there's our answer. So around just under a third of a chance there. Okay, now I'd like you to have a go at this similar question. Pause the video, have a go, and then I'm gonna go run through the answer. I'll read it out first. A maths challenge team of four is to be chosen from six year 10s and seven year 11s. Part A. How many different teams could be chosen if there are no constraints? All you need is four students, okay? You're choosing from the six year 10s and the seven year 11s, but if there's no constraint, if it's not, you have to have um, the same amount from each year group. If it's just, you need four from these people, how many different teams could be chosen? And part B, if I pick a team at random, what is the probability it has more year 11s than year 10s? Okay, pause and have a go. So the answer for this, part A is simply choosing four from 13, okay? Because you have six year 10, seven year 11s, so there are 13 you are choosing from. So from 13, choose four, and that is 715 different possible teams that you could send to the math challenge, okay? Part B. If I pick a team at random, what's the probability it has more year 11s than year 10s? So write down all the different possible options. So either you have all four are year 11s, and that would be from seven year 11s, choose four students, which is 35 teams. Then the other option is three year 11s and one year 10. Those are the two possible options. Three year 11s would be from seven, choose three, and one year 10 is from six, choose one. And that is a total of 210 possible ways in which I could choose three year 11s and one year 10. So that means there are 245, because that's 35 and 210, there are 245 different teams with more year 11s, okay? And therefore the probability of getting a team with more year 11s 
is equal to 245 out of 715. Okay, uh, you can simplify it down. It's 49 out of 143, but don't worry about that. If you got those two answers for A and for B, that's really well done. Okay, remember combinatorics, that's combinations, permutations, all that, this topic really scares scares mathematicians scares math teachers silly okay it's a lovely lovely course it's a lo lovely topic area but it does scare them okay so if you're understanding this then that is brilliant okay so what you should do now is you should um go away and practice questions from exercise 10.3 from this lovely book so the third exercise from chapter 10 okay and there are questions on permutations in there and questions on combinations. The specific questions on combinations are question one, part two, and then questions three onwards, except for questions 11, 14, and 16. Okay. But I mentioned in the previous lesson which questions, those were the sort of questions. So one part one and question two and 11, 14 and 16 were questions you should do for permutations. OK, but if you want to just have a go at the entire exercise and then try and work out whether it's a permutation or a combination question, that will enhance your fluency immeasurably as well. OK, so go away, enjoy. And I will see you in the following lessons where we talk about binomial expansion and binomial distribution, which actually follows on beautifully from combinations because it uses the NCR button um, on your calculator, that, that function extensively. Okay, go off and enjoy.